Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to CW Live. My name's Chris Webber, Head of Communications at the CW. We'd like to welcome anybody who's watching us either live uh, with us at the minute at six o'clock or, or who's joining in later on, perhaps after finishing work and, and catching up. So either way, welcome to the, the show. Um, tonight's session um, is for you, really. It's for the members to have access to the union's leadership and ask your questions. But it's also for, for Dave, Andy and Karen to get as many points across as possible um, to you and, and to discuss with you the, the matters that are so of burning importance and there are many that I know that um, the team want to go through with all of you uh, tonight. So before we take your questions though, um, I want to ask you to do a few things. Let us know where you're watching from. Uh, let us know, you know um, how proud you are to be a member of the union. Let us know how long you've been a member of the union and we'll get the best of your comments uh, up on the screen. Also, Tag your colleagues um, so we've got as big many people as possible online as we possibly can. I can already see which I know the team will be delighted with. We've got over a thousand people online with us in just a few minutes, so that's f absolutely fantastic. We're really chuffed with that. But please tag, please share, and let's get it out. I'll introduce our panel first of all. I've got with me uh, Dave Ward, General Secretary. Good evening, Dave. Good evening, Chris. Good evening, everyone. I've got with me Andy Kerr, the Deputy General Secretary for Telecoms and Financial Services. Good evening, Hi, Andy. Hi. And I've got our President, Karen Rose. Good evening, Karen. Hi, everybody. Okay, so while you all dig, dig away, I'm sure you've got many, many questions and get ready then. I'm going to give the panelists just a couple of minutes or so just to set the scene, starting with our General Secretary, Dave Ward. Over to you, Dave. Yeah, thanks, Chris. And uh, thanks, everybody, for coming on. Uh, we really appreciate the fact uh, that you've joined us tonight. I suppose, um, you know, what we want to set out is what the purpose of this session is. And I think that is really about us talking very openly, uh, having a proper debate about what's happening in BT at the moment. And in particular, why the actions of the senior management team and the board on a range of issues uh, is unacceptable to the union. And you know, those issues, Karen and, and Andy, of course, will go through and talk about where we are with the company. Um, but there is clearly a growing threat of compulsory redundancies. Unfortunately, we've seen uh, the first compulsory redundancy since privatisation has taken place in BT Enterprise. And with the company's Better Workplace program, uh, which is about consolidating some of the workplaces into, I think, around 20 or 30 sites, um, that risk of compulsory redundancy with a program of big change that is being done without the agreement of the union uh, just makes um, more challenges for our members' jobs and job security going forward. Uh, that's not just uh, enterprise, that also is obviously around BT technology uh, and desk-based jobs in open reach and consumer. You've seen the company serve notice on the pensions agreement, a deal that's only a couple of years old. Uh, and from what Andy will tell you, uh, that is about, again, weakening the redundancy terms that are attached to that agreement. So again, a threat to job losses. You've seen the, the company acting outside of the pay point agreements. Uh, and rather than looking to level up and harmonise, uh, it appears to us that the company are looking to find the lowest common denominator and level down. You've seen the company on uh, reducing uh, or, or taking away, making people work harder, BT engineers uh, with travelling time. Uh, just not acceptable on a range of these issues. And Andy will go through some of that. But tonight is also about listening to your views, listening to where the members are, what you think we should be doing. Um, and I suppose that's the key question, really. It's all right talking about some of the issues, some of the problems, but we really need to get to talking about what is it that we're going to do about those problems. And we've reached a point as a trade union where clearly there are a number of things we now need to do. In any negotiation with an employer, you're never going to get the best agreement unless the employer knows that the members are fully behind the union. So it's our job tonight uh, and this is the start of that process, uh, to build a massive campaign of engagement with the members. It's our job to prepare, if necessary, 
for an industrial action ballot. It's our job for Andy and the team to talk to you about how they're going to approach the company in negotiations so that we have a twin track approach. We always want to reach an agreement, um, but we know that with the world of work today and the way that the company are operating, that we have to take a stronger position against BT. Um, when it comes to that, we also hopefully might have a chance to talk about some of the work that we'll be doing politically to help our members and protect their jobs. The government are about to announce a £5 billion investment in gigabit capable broadband across the UK. And our job is to influence that debate in a way that makes sure that whoever gets that contract, whatever companies get it, that it's about good employment terms and conditions across the piece. Similarly, with call centres, we know that we want to create the levelling up process, the race to the top, and we now need to resist uh, what BT will be doing in terms of the race to the bottom. So there's a lot at stake for our members. It's time for the union to work with the members in a way where we show the company that we're together um, and that we can build a strong campaign to get the best possible agreement to secure your futures. Thank you, Dave. I'm going to now hand over to Anna. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks, Chris, and uh, th thanks, Dave, for the, for those wo those words. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone uh, for uh, you know, coming on to this call tonight. Uh, it's been a strange, uh, good few weeks now, and uh, hopefully you're all safe and well, and your families are safe and well too. I know there'll be some people on this call from various companies, and you, and everybody's welcome, and we do represent uh, a wide wide range. Of companies in the TNFS, uh, and we do everybody, no matter what company they're in. But as Dave said tonight, I think is uh, is really uh, mainly uh, uh, about being where we're going. And Dave, I did send us a layout that they were facing. Now I I know that uh, BT are facing real uh, problems in the future. BT will change. There's no doubt about it. Uh, over the next five, ten years, we'll have to transform. And we don't necessarily have a problem with that. We don't necessarily understand where they're going. In fact, we probably understand it more. The other issue with the company is, is how they get from where we are today to where they want to be tomorrow. And they have got one answer to that, and we have another answer. And we don't believe like, quite clearly that they need to make the draconian cuts that they they will attempt to do. We don't believe that they have to do uh, a lot of the things that they've done. Compulsively done, they, we don't believe needs to be put in place. But what they haven't done over the last few years is stuck to the agreements that we've actually got. And had they stuck to those agreements, we maybe wouldn't be facing what we're facing today. So we are going to embark on a, a campaign, as Dave mentioned a second ago. We are going to negotiate because that's what we, we do. That's what we do on your behalf. We negotiate, try to get the best we can from any negotiations. And actually, as a, as a union, we have been very, very successful uh, over the years. Some would say maybe too successful. Maybe we're victims of our own success uh, in that. that we've always managed to get a negotiated settlement. But enough is enough uh, for mismanagement. We believe that what they're saying and what they're doing needs to be done. So we are going to go out in a campaign and we are going to argue with the company. But what we need to do is not necessarily just react to what they have doing. We need to set our own agenda. What is it the CW want? What is it you, the members, want in BT? So we will be sitting out over the next few weeks in discussions with our activist, our executive, our plan of campaign. But not just to campaign against what BT is, but also at the same time to campaign for what we want. It's about time now we set the agenda. Rather than firefighting all the time, we actually sit down and actually set out what we want from this company. This company can well afford 
uh, to pay the terms and conditions that we expect uh, for our members. And we're going to continue to argue with them. We don't have to have uh, that route to the bottom any longer. It has to stop. And we need to start uh, organising ourselves. So it's really important we have you yourselves on board. I understand many of you, and there's no doubt maybe some questions about pay tonight uh, come up tonight, and you're welcome to ask a question. But rather than to, as some would like to do, turn that anger to who's really to blame for this. That's the company. we are the people to blame? We have got to stand together. But yes, we'll have our uh, on tactics and where we go, etc. But we'll get through that. But we need to reach a consensus. And we need, as Dave said, we need your backing. Uh, we need your backing so we can do what you want us to do. So over the next few weeks, in, uh, in different lines of business, you'll be seeing lots of campaigning, uh, lots of communication coming out from head office on it. We would ask you to read it. We would ask you to take part. We would ask you to talk to each other, engage with each other, and give us your feedback. I believe that we can actually win this campaign, and I believe we can get BT to back off in lots of the areas that they're proposing. But I also want to make sure not only do we stop them and that in their tracks, but we actually move forward and actually set out our agenda for the future. So I'll leave it at that. I welcome your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. I'm now going to hand over to Karen to make her opening statement. Over to you, Karen. Thank you, Chris. <clears throat> and um, I think Dave and Andy have outlined quite well um, some of the problems that we're going to be um, facing in the future, and indeed some of them that have already arrived on our doorstep. And I think that um, what's really important, and I think the point that I want to get across is that we do, we, we, I'm really pleased to be able to have these um, sessions and these chances to engage um, with our membership because what this um, last few months have done I suppose um, although they've been very strange times is they've allowed us to be a little bit more innovative about the way that we uh, interact with our membership because what is very key I think is that if we are going to embark on a campaign and win we need to unite and we need to be all moving in the same direction it is a case that it's not just us, the people that you see tonight on this um, uh, broadcast that are the union. We, it's not just us that's the CWU. You're all the CWU. The CWU is basically um, all of the members. And the, the whole point is that the strength of the union is dependent on all of the members uh, back in the direction in which we're heading. And that's going to become more and more important as we try to address some of these issues that we have facing us. There is also no doubt that regardless, particularly in BT, and I'm very cognizant of the fact that I've already seen that there's people who are listening to this event tonight that are members of the TNFS constituency and other companies other than BT. And just to reiterate what, um, what Andy has said, is we're very cognizant of that and we're very um, concerned that we make sure that we include all of those people and that we are ensuring that this race to the bottom that we're seeing start to take on doesn't happen in any of those companies where we, we represent members. So it's not just about BT, it is about ensuring that as a trade union we are standing up for the terms and conditions and better terms and conditions and employment and security of employment for all of our members regardless of which company they work in. In BT at the moment, what we're seeing is there are attacks coming in several different directions. And we believe that regardless of where you work, which line of business you work in, uh, and which building you work in, which location you work in around the country, there is the potential for one of these issues to be impacting on all of you at some point. And so the unity and the strength that unity gives us is the message that I want to get across to people. We have to stick together and we have to turn our anger and our arguments in the direction that is deserved. So that's my message tonight, Chris, and I look forward to the questions. <clears throat> Thank you, all of you, for that. So, uh, yeah, we've got thousands of people online, which is fantastic. We've got loads of questions, loads of positivity, 
loads of challenges, as you would expect, as is the great um, animal that is the CW and, and its levels of democracy. So, Dave, I'm going to come to you first, and I want to put a couple of questions to you and Andy, and I want to um, obviously take these head on. The first one that to you as General Secretary would be, which has been asked by three or four people, and I'll try and bring it together so everyone feels their question has been um, put to you as General Secretary, is, is the CWU a union that's only interested in postal workers? No, clearly we're not. And, uh, you know, the purpose of tonight is to make that point very clear to all our members. And as General Secretary, my job is to make sure that we give Andy, uh, Karen and all of the TNFS uh, constituency, all of the members who work in the various different businesses, all the support and help we can. And that is what we're committed to doing. What we're facing, the world of work, wherever you are, it is a real problem where employers will seek to take advantage of technology, of automation, some of that we have to deal with. Um, you're going to see employers take advantage, sadly, of the COVID-19 situation. Some employers will be in real difficulty, but others undoubtedly will use that situation um, to attack members' terms and conditions. You're seeing that in the wider economy. Our job as a trade union is to protect all our members. I think where some of the questions might come from is that perhaps in the past, um, through the, the, the reality of the, of the world that we've lived in as trade unions, BT, uh, telecoms, companies, you know, these were in a much more privatised environment many, many years ago. Uh, Royal Mail, that's only happened in recent years. And therefore, you know, there is sometimes a focus on Royal Mail issues because of the numbers of members that are involved in that debate. But let me make it absolutely clear tonight. We're talking about up in the ante across the whole piece so that all of our members feel engaged with the union. That's about transforming the level of engagement we have. We're committed to that. The members will see that going forward. And that's what tonight is about, is to get that message across. Let's have a real debate on what's happening across the sector. Uh, obviously, there is quite a bit of focus tonight on BT, but that can re be replicated in the other TNFS uh, companies where we represent members. Uh, let's build that campaign. Let's make the employer and all employers know that the union has got its agenda. It's going to fight for its agenda and it's going to protect our members' jobs, terms and conditions. Thank you, Dave. And then, Andy, I want to put one to you. That's another really yep. regular one, uh, if you can, mate, which is that um, lots of members saying that they feel let down by the union around the pay rise, saying it wasn't enough, um, uh, it was poor, and um, effectively saying, you know, why did the union's executive recommend that pay deal at this point? Well, yeah, and, and I'm certainly not going to sit here and now that we can say it's a great pay deal. It wasn't a great pay deal. Let's be clear about that. And we never sold it as such. We sold it on the basis uh, that we thought that, uh, that issue had to get out of the way. We're in, whether we like it or not, we're in a difficult situation just now under the COVID restrictions and what we can do. And the fight on pay, it was not the, uh, the real fight for us. The bigger fight is yet to come, and that's the bit where, where we were always clear about it. You know, we, we did survey members so just a few, uh, and quite clearly, uh, and it's coming across uh, day by day, it's coming even uh, even clearer that people are more worried about job security. And that's the big issue facing us. And that's the issue and that's the fight we need to take on. And we're clear about that. And we always knew that would be the issue. So pay was a distraction. Of course we would like more. But we have done really well as a company, uh, as a union, with a company over the last few years and pay rises. So yes, there's a blip in this one. No, it's not a great pay deal, but it's one we can live with because the fight is more about job. It's, 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 if you don't have the jobs, there's no point in arguing to pay. You know, so we need the jobs. We need to keep the jobs as as much as possible that we can get in there. In fact, we want to create, even get rid of jobs, uh, and uh, so that's the position we we're in. So we never sold it as a as a great pay deal. We seen it as a as a decent pay deal. And I, and I would have to say, is if you look over the last few weeks and months, had we dragged it out, 
we might have been in, a, in actually a worse position than we were. So it was a, a, an issue. A good uh, ballot result uh, in favour of us. I'm glad that the, the people did listen to the, the executive, did listen to the view. I assure you of something. Once we get rid of the issue uh, about job security, we all could be back next year on pay. And once we get the engagement with the membership and, and, and do the work that we need to do over the next few months on job security, we were much better placed next year when it comes to pay. And I can assure you, we will be arguing stronger next year on pay than we did this year because we will then know we've got the full backing of our membership. It? So hopefully that that can forget. You know, we have got a pay rise. There's lots of companies out there who have no pay rise at this point in time. Uh, and, and also we have managed to achieve it, bank it, and move forward to the bigger campaign. So, um, Karen, if I can come to you now. So and Andy set out in his opening contribution, you know, the, the sort of depth of the issues, if you like, and, and, and what the constituency and what the union and indeed the membership are facing. I wanted to put to you, you know, there seems to be lots of different things going on, lots of attacks from the company, you know, lots of external circumstances due to COVID-19 and, and other economical uh, factors. How do we set about, though, starting to bring the membership together into sort of one campaign that's going to get, get everyone behind the union ready for what we face? No, that's a big question. <laughs> it, it, uh, uh, it is, right? And I think that actually is a multi-pronged attack, attack, isn't it, in order to bring everybody together. So it, it's not just one thing. There's, there's no magic bullet that's going to fix all of this, right? But it is a case that we have to make sure that we build. Uh, and it was, the, it was the point that Dave made, actually, about building engagement with the members. So actually, what we're saying to our members out there, if you're not involved in the union already, get involved, right? There's always something that people can do. What we need to do is we need to reach out in lots of different ways. We need to use mediums like this um, for engagement with our members. There's all sorts of other electronic means via social media, with emails, with text messages. Um, at the moment, obviously due to the pandemic, we're unable to have what we would call our traditional type of engagement sessions, which were normally branch meetings. And I have to say, from a personal perspective, um, it is rather strange sitting here at home in my study talking to a camera on a laptop for engagement when I can't actually see who's watching and is in the room because I actually like those live engagement sessions at members' meetings. And this is um, obviously not the same. But nevertheless, and we know that we, we know the members are out there, we know they're listening to this, they know we know they're watching. So actually, communication is going to be key in the way that we address this. Raising the levels of engagement, getting our members to interact with us, and then for us to get those messages across, which actually tells the members, shows the members how they can participate in the campaign that we run and all of the activities that we're going to be running in order to try to protect um, their jobs and give them security in the future. Thank you, Carol. I'm going to come to Dave, if I can. Dave, um, obviously, you know, you're the General Secretary of the whole union. You meet with lots of other uh, general secretaries and trade union leaders across the movement. I mean, some of the members are saying in response to, um, you know, the points that have been raised by the panellists so far, like COVID-19 isn't really a factor. Uh, but yet, you know, if you look outside of the unions uh, companies, you're seeing millions of people on furloughed, millions more facing redundancies. The union isn't immune from that, is it? And our companies, we represent members, surely? No, of course not. Uh, and look, we're going to face uh, the biggest recession that we've probably seen uh, in our lifetime. Most um, experts on the economy are saying that. So, you know, we have to prepare for the fact that companies will seek to take advantage of that situation. But if the question was one that is just not about COVID-19, that's what we're saying. Um, there are problems that we face irrespective of COVID-19. And I suppose one of the things, the last question, what connects all of this? Well, it, it's the company setting out that over the next five years, it wants to make £1.3 billion pounds of savings. Um, now, how is it going to do that? Well, it's going to do that by attacking jobs 
terms and conditions. And that's why Andy was completely correct and Karen in, in emphasizing the, this particular point. It's what we do on job security going forward and how we shape the future direction of the company and by the way, the wider sector, all of our members who work for other companies in the telecommunications sector. The union has to shape the future of the, of the companies and of the sector. And the way we do that is connecting what they will want, which is all of these cost savings um, and making sure that we get a different strategy going forward. But look, this will come down to engagement with members. It will come down to members believing um, that standing with the union and us all standing together against the employer is what ultimately will get the best agreement and deal with these range of issues that we're currently facing. We're not immune to what's happening around us, but our focus is also very much on what's happening uh, in BT and the wider companies in the telecommunications sector. Thank you, Dave. Uh, Andy, we've got a question. Uh, I'm trying to find the gentleman's name, but we've had so many comments, I, I, I've lost it, which is probably a good thing because it shows so many people are on engaged with us. So thank you for that. Um, but the comment um, I, I'd written down here was about communications. And basically it was saying, like, you know, how are we going to up, up our game in communications with members in the in the coming months? And, 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 and the gentleman was also saying he was happy to see us engaging in, in, via this forum as well. So it's sort of a general session uh, question about how improving comms, Andy. Well, we are going to be improving comms, and uh, Chris, uh, you're going to be heavily involved in it, as you well know. Uh, and, and so, yes, we are going to be uh, up a game in comms. We are, we've done a lot in the last few weeks uh, getting um, uh, information out to individual members, and we'll continue to do that. But we'll be using various medium uh, uh, to do that. Yes, we'll be up in the game on Twitter and all social media, with Facebook, uh, etc. We do intend to do uh, more of these sessions. In fact, we will we will have another one scheduled uh, within the next week or so uh, on this, and I would have to come on that because uh, we're going to focus on that one uh, a little bit on open reach. So. For all you open people out there, the next one we do, we might be a bit of a focus uh, on that. And please come on to it and, and get your message across. But we intend to do it uh, for other uh, groups of workers and focus in. So there will be a lot more uh, information coming out from head office uh, than there's been. Uh, and obviously, watch your branches. Uh, your branches will be sending you stuff out too. So take, take part in it. Uh, you know, get onto uh, the social media whatever form you, you, you want to, uh, because we'll be using everything uh, uh, to uh, uh, that we can. Uh, and Chris and his team, members of the comms department, uh, are totally on board uh, with us. So we are, uh, have we got an absolute laid out plan? No, we haven't. Uh, and I'll be truthful about that. But are we sitting down? Uh, we ha have we got a plan? Yes, we have. Uh, are we going to be working that over the next few days and weeks? Yes, we will be uh, working with, closely with, with Chris and his team uh, to do it. So it is a matter of watch this space. I, I can assure you there'll be much more communication coming out of uh, head office than there's been uh, in the past. I think we've upped the game. Personally, I think we've upped the game a lot in the last few weeks, but there's a lot more to come, uh, and we're working on that. So, you know, keep your, your eye on things, whether it's on WhatsApp, whether it's on, as I say, Twitter, Facebook or whatever, uh, Facebook Lives, uh, we'll be doing it. And and the main thing I would say to you, not only should you do it, obviously, obviously if you're on this call tonight, you're interested and you, you're taking part, but make sure your work colleagues take part in it. Make sure others take part in the event like this and make sure they, they listen to, to what's been said. Uh, and we want to build up uh, our workplace threat. So if you want to be involved in the campaign, get involved, get in contact with your branch or get in contact with us at head office because what we want is there's many people out there uh, on the ground agitating as much as we can. We need to get our message clear, uh, back to be too clear. It's all very well. I can make the, 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 the big debates with the senior people in BT, but what's more important is yourselves on the ground making it clear to your local man. If they have got any sense, they'll understand you're right. Because it's not just your jobs you're looking after. In reality, you're looking after their jobs too. 
So hopefully you can get your message across that we're not, we are angry, we're not having it anymore. It's as simple as that. Enough is enough, and we'll continue to fight. Fa thank you, uh, Andy. That's fantastic. Karen, uh, one of the questions that's come up uh, repeatedly, um, Andy touched on the fact that we're having a session specifically for our Open Reach members um, it, within the coming weeks, so I, I know we'll major on it there. But one of the questions that's come up quite a few times, I wonder if we could deal with it here, was uh, members saying, what's happened to the R Arrows campaign? Is that now rolled into this wider campaign? Is it something the union uh, is not dealing with anymore? How are we moving that issue forward? I don't, think, I, don't, I don't think for a minute that it's not something that the union is dealing with anymore. In fact, one of the things you see, um, you know, in all of this, when we're going through this campaign, it is about aspiration as well as it's not just about protection for what we've got already. It's aspiration about what we want for the future. And of course, what we want for the future, one of the things we want for the future is that um, people are treated more fairly. You know, that absolutely is a goal. And our hours is key to that because it's not right that there's some engineers, uh, the more newly employed ones on the new terms and conditions, have to give so much extra time of their own time and paid time, therefore their hours, our hours, um, when um, when quite clearly it's, a, it's, it's, it's really, it's, not, it's unnecessary as well, actually, right? So there is no doubt that I think that I've heard this question several times recently, and there's no doubt that I think that, and, and honestly, and I don't know if this is the answer, but because of the campaign, because of the, the pandemic, right, I think that there is no doubt that we, in the very beginning, had to concentrate on some of the things. So if people have seen a pause in the Hour Hours campaign, I think it probably can be explained by that. It's very much still a live issue. It's very much something that will be ongoing. But I think that what we'll find is that as we move forward, that all of these things will have to come together and all be part of the campaign. And like I said, the Hour Hours campaign, as far as I'm concerned, is part of the aspiration for the future. And, you know, because this is a two pronged thing. Thank you, Karen. Um, Dave, I want to come to you and I'm going to start to talk um, in the next phase of the of the session to, to, to Andy about the possibility of, you know, could we be heading towards potentially for an industrial action ballot, for example. Um, and I wanted to talk about, you know, if that was something that Andy and his executive felt was an avenue, you know, what level of support will the union be putting behind as a whole beyond that campaign? Well, I think what Andy has said, uh, the branch briefing and what the executive was saying is that we have a twin track approach. We negotiate to try and get a deal, um, but we have to prepare for engagement uh, with the members um, in the event that we might need to take industrial action and win an industrial action ballot. And, you know, what I'm saying to everybody very clearly is that we'll put all the resources we've got within the whole of the union to ensure that if that moment comes, that we win that ballot. And we're confident um that we've built a machine in this union through the way we can engage and we're now spreading um that the effects and the influence of that way of working uh, across the tnfs constituency that what you will see people getting more and more confident and um, that standing together actually brings about results and that's the whole basis of trade unionism if you don't do that um, then the employer at some point, when it has these big plans of change uh, and this £1.3 billion of savings that it's trying to make, they will take liberty uh, with our members, with their jobs, with their terms and their conditions. So, you know, we're absolutely behind uh, with all the resources we've got. Anything that Andy and the team want, they will get from the whole of the union. But more than that, you know, I think tonight is about preparing for an industrial action ballot. We've got to be honest about that. It's about making the levels of engagement better so that everybody understands the issues and everybody gets confidence from that. Yeah. And it's also about saying what the members role is in that. And this is the point I think where we started. Members might sometimes be angry about other things uh, that have happened, 
but this is the moment we all have to stand together. And, you know, we're confident that if we do this properly, if we do this engagement properly, tonight's the start of that, then we will build massive support behind the union's executive. And through that, we will get a really good deal and deal with the problems that we're facing at the moment. Thank you, Dave. Andy, I suppose I'll put the, the question to you really succinctly because quite a few members are asking is, do, do you feel we are heading towards an industrial action ballot potentially? And if we are, do you think it's a lot of this union can win? Well, I think you always start from the position of hope for the best. Uh, is, is the way I would uh, look at it. And, and as Dave says, we've taken this uh, decision quite clearly to do the twin track approach. Now, there's nobody, I, I will sit down with the employer having negotiations uh, to get through this. I'm quite clear. I'm absolutely clear. There is a way through this. There's a negotiated way to find through this. But that means the company moving away from their current position. So I'm clear that we can get a way forward that uh, it satisfies uh, us all. If the company are not prepared uh, to uh, compromise in, in certain areas uh, and come to, towards the union and work with the union uh, go through the next period, well, we'll have no option. And I think our members would expect us to at least negotiate or uh, attempt to negotiate a way through. I think our members would expect us to do that because I always think industrial action is the last resort. But if we have to do it, I'll be clear. And I'll be clear with everybody that's on this call tonight. We will press the button. We will press the button for industrial action if we need it, if we need to. But we'll do it. And, and, and I have absolutely no issue. Uh, and Dave, and, uh, there's, uh, cause Dave and I have spoken about this now for a, uh, for a few weeks. And I know for example, uh, for, for definite, we have the whole of the CW in support of us uh, in, in this campaign. Because we can't afford to lose. If we push the button in this election, we must all come together. Oh, I think we lost Andy then. Okay, can you, Karen and Dave, you still with me? Yeah. Why would we? Yeah. Okay, well, I'll just try and make sure, try and get Andy back, get his uh, Wi Fi working and get him back in. So, if ever is a case that we need more uh, broadband engineers in the country, then Andy's making it for us live live on the session. So well done there, Andy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, I'm going to come to um, Karen if I can, and then I'm going to start try and move into sort of, you know, uh, more, more positive talk, if you like, in terms of future, future strategy. And then we'll try and make sure we get Andy back on. Um, with us as well, and I'm sure he he will be on shortly once he's sorted his Wi-Fi out. Karen, my question was going to be around. Um, there's, an, I mean, obviously, you know, online world is very different from the workplace. We found that in industrial action ballots, we found that in workplace meetings, in in in, in all sorts of votes and everything else, you know. And we know that, but there's a lot of negativity um, online like tonight, and generally in terms of um, uh, the questions we're getting, and, and over the last few weeks. In, in, in particular, so um, as Andy comes back on, so my question well, to you—they are got Andy back. My question to you, um, Karen, is: is how do we, you know, start to get those people on board, and how important is it that people realise that, you know, if BT or or Open Reach or any of the employers are watching the session, they can see people saying, "Oh, there's no point. I give up. What's the point?" That actually, you know, you're probably strengthening the employer there rather than your own union in your own course. Yes, Chris, I, um, and the, the very last point I think is the most important of, of all of those things because what is, and it is a bit of a frustration, isn't it? When I, I understand, right, that as a, as a union, we have a diverse membership and a diverse opinion, right? And so, you know, we don't all necessarily agree on absolutely everything. But what I think that we probably can agree on is that as a united force, that's our best chance of winning, right? So, and also the other thing is that we need to get across, I think, to the membership is when they're making their criticisms, there's usually a basis in something that the employer has done. So it's not the, it's not the union, it's not the CWU that are doing the things to them that they don't like. 
it is actually the employer. And I think it's quite important to get a message across to people that that's the direction in which they should send their anger. Because actually, people do watch these live sessions. People are probably watching it now. People from the employers where we, you know, where we represent the members. And when they see the negativity, that is not necessarily great for us or great for the membership. And I think that when people are making these comments, they need to be mindful of that. However, what I will say is, I do also understand that sometimes people need to express frustration. And actually, we are, we are a democratic organization. And so that means that it's really important for people to be able to have the opportunity to voice their opinion, even if it is a minority opinion, or if it is something that probably you know, as the executive, we might not like on occasions. It is really important for people to voice their concerns, but I also think that we have to be cognizant of the fact that actually the anger needs to be directed to the right place in order for us to be successful in both combating, combating the attacks that are coming at us and also achieving some of the things that we aspire to achieve for our members for the future. And so, uh, you know, it's it's easy sometimes to type out um, on an event like this uh, and or even send in an email. It's easy to be critical. And it's what isn't so easy is to turn that um, that negativity into positive positivity. So it, but the message that I think that I would like to get across is we have to be positive. We have to unify. We have to actually direct our anger to the right place, and then we move forward together in order to achieve what we're setting out to achieve, which actually is security in terms of jobs for our members for the future, but not just security, making sure that we have good terms and conditions, and in some cases, better terms and conditions than what people have got now. That's the fight that we have on our hands, and the union is on the side of the membership. So even if you disagree with some of the things that we do, you need to remember that actually we're all, we're all on the same side here. We are actually um, fighting the, um, the attacks that are coming. And that is the most important message. Direct the anger at the place where you need to direct it. And in this case, is direct that anger at the employer. And do like Andy says, make sure you're telling the managers at a local level Make sure you're making your displeasure and your anger known to the company because it's no good telling us because, or just telling us, I should say, because we're angry too. We're absolutely furious about some of these attacks that are coming. So we share that anger. We just need to direct it to the right place. Thank you, Karen, and great to have you back with us, Andy. Um, Dave, <laughs> Dave um, I'm going to shift the debate if I can. I know you've been working with Andy and his team um, on future strategy. You know, one of the things that perhaps members don't understand or, or don't not made aware of at certain points is that the CWU is a union that doesn't just oppose what employers are trying to do. It, it's a union with a vision and a strategy uh, that wants to put together something that we can take out the politicians, we can take out your opinion formers and shape the industry. And yourself and Andy, I'm gonna ask that, both of you to comment on this, have been, working together on some of that stuff, haven't you, Dave? Yeah. I mean, there's three areas that are relevant uh, in this particular debate, and it's important that our members understand that when you connect what you, what's happening industrially in the workplace with some of our wider campaigns and political work that we do, and within the whole trade union movement, you become stronger. So the three areas that we're focusing on are lobbying the government, um, and we've started that process, uh, we're awaiting meetings with the minister um, around the investment that the government have promised. Um, I think it's five billion that they're talking about on gigabit capable uh, broadband across the country, the rollout of that. Uh, and our job is to ensure that that money is spent in the right way, that that money is spent on good employment terms and conditions, not on some of these competitors who don't uh, treat their workers uh, in the right way, 
uh, insecure employment models. Um, I think a lot of the companies, the Altnet companies, you know, we've got to support all of the members who work in the various companies, but with the right approach. Uh, and one of the ways you do that, which Andy, David Bowman, the team have been leading on, and we're going to help that politically, is you create a charter for engineers, for example. So it doesn't matter what company you work in, there would be a set of good standards for employment practices. And you start to rule out campaign against all of these insecure employment working practices that eventually uh, put pressure on the best terms and conditions uh, across the sector. Uh, similarly, in call centres, um, there, there's going to be a call centre charter that we start campaigning for politically. These are things that uh, are absolutely crucial. The union is leading a campaign within the trade union movement for a new deal for workers. It, it's looking at what's coming on technology, on automation. Uh, and what we're really saying tonight is by linking all of these things up, um, we are going to get to a much stronger position. We're going to take a stronger stance against the employers, um, but we're also going to set out, as Andy said, start, what is the right agenda for workers in this country and for the workers that we represent? Thank you, Dave. Uh, Andy, I suppose, you know, um, are we are we looking to weave some of that, that positivity, some of that strategy into this big campaign over the coming months so that effectively, you know, we're not just going to members and saying this is look where we're looking to defend. We're going and saying these are advances we're looking to make as well. Is that part of a plan? Andy, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's interesting. Uh, following on a bit from Dave there, yeah, I think that is. You know, we have lobbied the uh, government, uh, uh, opposition parties, and and governments over uh, over the years. There's nobody argued more about broadband in this country than the CWU. I was campaigning about broadband in 2003, 2004, when some people in the company could even spell it. Uh, at the time, uh, the, the issue. We have been. We are the ones that's been arguing for demand broadband. We are the ones that's been putting uh, government, not even the company. In fact, I would accuse the company of uh, and the lack of investment for a number of years uh, that got them into the position we are uh, we are now. It's only in the last three, four, or five years that the company have actually woke up to the issue of broadband. So we, you know, we will keep on lobbying. Uh, where we can, because uh, 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 this is not just about our workers, uh, our member in BT or in any other telecom company. The issue about broadband is actually to stimulate the economy. So it's for UK PLC we argue in be on behalf of. So the, the arguments that Dave puts uh, at TUC and to others about the new new deal for workers is on the back. I've been able to get the, the technology uh, in place for people to work, the, people, the gig economy, uh, etc. But the biggest issue I see to us, our campaign is about the future of work in BP. So it is about, as I said at the beginning, about arguing against uh, some of the things that BT uh, want to impose on us in, in some way. But it's about us setting the agenda for the future. So I'm not just thinking. Uh, about those individuals who have been in the company for 20, 13, 14 years, as we have. But I think even more so about those people who have just joined the company or the people who will come into the uh, BT uh, in the future, who have got a long term to go. So there's a real issue here. This is really about the future of work uh, in BT. And if we don't grasp this now, if we fail in this, we actually members today but the potential members of tomorrow. Well, I don't think we can fail. I don't think we will fail. I think we have to be positive. I think if we stick together, uh, if we keep arguing in the same case, we'll have a logical argument to put uh, to the company wherever we go. And if we get our, our support of our, our members over the next few weeks and months, I am quite clear we can do it. And we will bring in uh, uh, people uh, from politicians. We've actually got Nicola Sturgeon, who I'm not a big fan of personally, but at least she's come out in Scotland and, and thanked telecom workers in Scotland. She thanked them for what we've done because we have proved the cases in Scotland about call centres. 
The CWU were behind that, along with some uh, academics. We proved the case uh, uh, on the situation, and we're actually changing the, the world at work uh, in parts of Scotland. We can do that in other parts of the country, and we won't keep on arguing with politicians uh, and, and, until they're sick of hearing from us. Uh, I can assure you that uh, as an organisation, we will lobby whatever we need to do. But the main thing for us today is to make sure that people are on board and stick together because it's your future we're fighting for. Thank you, Andy. I'm going to uh, bring Karen back if I can. And then I'm going to sort of move into the final section of, 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 of the session. Karen, um, we'll uh, go back to almost where we started with, but just because of lots and lots of members have asked this around the issue of pay and, and um, members saying, why wasn't the pay rise backdated? A specific query about that element of it. If you could pick that one up for me. Right. So basically the pay was due from, the pay review was due on the 1st of April. Um, we absolutely argued that that is therefore where you should apply from. Um, and we were um, we were unsuccessful in making that argument. So let's know, like I said, you, going back to the beginning, what Andy said when we had the question on pay earlier, the point is, did we think this was a great offer? No, we absolutely didn't. Um, we couldn't get the company to budge whatsoever. They wouldn't budge to backdate it. They wouldn't budge to increase it. But we had to take the view that actually we needed to um, we needed to move on at this point in time because there were threats that are coming at us which were bigger. And so the reason we took the decision that we did wasn't because, because we thought it was a great offer, and I'm not going to even argue, even begin to argue that it was a great offer. But we did um, take um, a survey of our members, and we realised that there was enough of the members who thought that it was um, a good enough offer to accept it, that we would have been in a difficult position if we had chosen to oppose it at that point, and it would have served as a, as a distraction away from the things that we absolutely needed to address. So this campaign that we are embarking on now, the threats that are coming in that respect are far bigger than us arguing for the pay to be backdated or for it to be increased. As Andy says, if we are successful in this campaign now, uniting the members, galvanising the membership, moving forward together, when it comes to the pay review next April, and it is due, we did have confirmation from the company that the pay review date would remain as the 1st of April and it will be 1st of April 2021, that actually we will be in a stronger position next year to argue for um, the pay review. And, we, and hopefully we'll be in a stronger position having secured um, future employment for people as well. So it's not that um, we didn't try. It's not that we think that it was acceptable. Um, not to backdate it, it's just that what we got was the best negotiate, the best um, that we could get from negotiation. And we took, we made a judgment call that it was important to move on at this time and to fight the things that we could see are coming and they are far bigger threats. So that's basically why we moved on and why we recommended that that pay, uh, pay rise at one point. Five percent from the first of July was accepted. Thank you, Karen. Um, so we're moving into the final um, sort of uh, minutes of the, of the session now. Everyone, we've just had a message. I think it was from an Angela saying that can we have another one of these sessions specifically for Open Reach members? Yeah, if you missed it earlier, Angela, Andy's already committed to that within the next couple of weeks. So, and I think we'll be having many more as well outlined in, in from Andy in sort of the overall comms plan. I'm going to come to. Um, you guys now, if I may, to sort of give some final thoughts. So I'm going to come to you first, Karen, if that's okay, just a, a final message to, to the members uh, watching us tonight. I think my, I think my final message is, is again, about engagement, um, which is kind of where I started. Actually, what we need is we need to unify the members, and that means all of them. So there's thousands of um, members on here tonight, and I'd like to thank you all for tuning into this to this uh, broadcast tonight, and for all those who might be watching us catch up on catch up, so to speak, and um, that is really important to us. But what's also important 
is that you um, talk about this and actually encourage your colleagues who might not have participated in this to get involved and to engage with us. And we want to hear your feedback as well as you listening to us. This is not just a one-way street. This is a two-way interaction that we're looking for. We're looking for um, other means of, of engagement, other means of communication. But the most important message I think that I want to get across is our strength is in unity. And we have to pull together here and we have to get everybody involved. We're really lucky in BT in that, or I say lucky, it's not by accident. It's because we've worked, always worked really, really hard to maintain high levels of membership density. So we have got massive um, number of members in BT. And that is a huge strength in itself. What we need to do now is galvanize that, bring all those members together so that we're united in this campaign going forward, which is about the future. Thank you, Karen. I'm going to now go to um, General Secretary Dave Ward for final thoughts. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, thanks, Chris. And, and again, I want to echo uh, you know, what Karen said about thanking uh, the members for coming on here tonight. Um, look, we understand that some of our members have not been happy uh, with some of the issues that have been dealt with in recent times. But equally, it's important that, that everybody recognises that the world of work at the moment is very challenging. And, you know, we're not going to get everything right as a trade union. No union does. But this is a moment where your union, your leadership, from me as General Secretary, from Andy as the Deputy General Secretary uh, for the TNFS constituency, are clearly saying that the actions of BT on a range of issues are, are simply unacceptable. And we have to do something about that. And the way that we need to go forward is not about, I want to get the, give the impression that this is about putting your head down and running at them um, and jumping from one situation to the other extreme. It's about building. It's about building support amongst the members. It's about building confidence by talking about the issues. And we are very confident that we've got very good reps out there, very good branches. Uh, you've got a good leadership. We can explain these issues in a way that I'm particularly confident that we'll get the backing of our members. So this is a moment where we look to the future. We decide that we have to take on the employer in the right way. Andy has explained that as his twin track approach, which is exactly the right thing to do. You make it clear to the members that you are behind the union. We get in and negotiate. And if we have to go there, we will. Um, and we're confident that if we need an industrial action ballot, we'll get a big yes vote and we'll get a good agreement. So back the union. Thanks for coming on tonight. We're going to transform the way that we engage with our members in all the businesses that we represent in the TNFS constituency. Thanks very much. Thank you. And I'm going to, Andy, I'm going to give the last word before I say my final thank yous to, to yourself. Uh, uh, cheers, Chris, and thanks very much. And uh, uh, thanks, everyone, for coming on to, to this call tonight. And uh, as uh, Angela, uh, we are going to do one specifically, uh, well, I wouldn't say specifically in open reach, but mainly in open reach, because we won't obviously stop people asking questions and, uh, and other things that, on that occasion. But we are going to put a plan together. We will be doing much more of this. Well, we can do a lot from head office uh, and comms and get the message across to members, but there's nothing more important than what the mouth we are So in the call centre, speak to each other about the issues. So whether it's career progression that's a, a, an issue in consumer, whether it's a site issue uh, because of the, the cut in the sites uh, in technology, or whether it's the same for desk-based people uh, in, in open reach, there is something in here that the BT are trying to do uh, uh, going forward that's going to affect everyone, everyone. So we need to be united. We can't, we can't allow them to pick us off in little groups here and there. We have to stay, stay united, no matter what part of the company you work in. And, and you know that's a, the great strength that, that we have got. So I would ask you, we'll do what we can from head office in our regions will do the work that we are going to do and we'll be building that up over the next few weeks uh but i would ask you yourself in the workplace start speaking about the 
So, you know, understanding that when they're coming for somebody uh, in technology today, it could be you and consumer tomorrow. Or are they coming for somebody in enterprise today, it could be somebody in open reach tomorrow. This is about the future. I keep saying about this. This is very much about the future. And we have to stay united. We can win this, this campaign. I'm absolutely clear about that. And we'll do it with the whole strength of opinion behind us. But we need to stick together. So thanks very much for coming on the call tonight. We'll do much more over the next few weeks and months. Uh, and I know I can count on your support. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. So um, well, it just leaves me to close the session by saying thank you to all of our panellists, to uh, Karen, Andy and Dave. Uh, I think we've all enjoyed the session. Thank you to about 9,000 members, I think, we'd, we views we'd have across the free uh, platforms. That's fantastic. We've had hundreds uh, of questions. We've had loads of challenge and we can see all of that and andy's pointed out that this is just the start of the campaign and start of you know a big engagement exercise so you'll see much more of this coming out but final thanks will be to thank you to everyone who's tuned in tonight because it's in your own time and we all really really appreciate you doing that so as everyone said stick with the union and we'll see you all soon good night everybody thanks, thanks.